Our farm was homesteaded by my great-great-grandfather on my mother's side. So I'm the fourth generation and my son and daughter are the fifth generation to be operating here. My dad started farming with my grandfather. They had some beef cows, had milk cows. They uh, had a few acres for farming. Today our operation consists of diversified grain operation and cow-calf. So we have basically a four crop rotation, uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, and some alfalfa. And then we do a lot of stuff with cover crops to help kind of diversify everything. And that makes it a lot easier on the cattle operation too for grazing purposes. We retain our calves back and for replacement efforts and then also run a feedlot. As far as the livestock side, uh, we've really tried to integrate them into our grazing and our crop production. The last couple of years, we've actually seeded full season cover crops just for some grazing. You know, the cows are a great recycler. Those deep-rooted brassicas uh, pull up nutrients and then the run, run them through the cows. What, what better way to recycle some of that stuff? Well, we probably have tried to uh, utilize some fields that are closer to some water supplies. You know, we're not afraid to put up electric fence and we can haul water too if we need to. We do that quite a bit in the fall for fall grazing. It's cheaper to haul water than it is to haul feed. So that's why we really like winter grazing as long as winter will allow. I've heard the term in the medical field with COVID recently, they say do no harm. And I, I think it was kind of our, my philosophy with the grazing is do less harm. Let's do something better than continuous grazing, you know. And so we began to understand a little bit about use and rest and, and do some cross fencing so you could manage the, the livestock impact and those kinds of things so that's it just started out of trying to do a better job yeah it's hard to change that mentality that a grass blade standing there is a, is a waste or you know less than optimal utilization but you, know, you learn that old adage about take half and leave half. When we're going out and we're moving cattle from one pasture to the next, you can just see how it benefits both the grass and the cattle because you can see how much better nutritionally we can offer different grasses to our cattle by letting that grass rest. Um, and so you see the, the cattle get excited. They want to come, they want that new grass. They um, are easy to move, they're easy to work with in that aspect. And so I love just going up to our, our big pasture and going from section to section and looking to see at what plants they ate, what plants they didn't eat, um, where are some improvements we can make here, where are some issues of certain species of grasses. I just find enjoyment in that and seeing what the cattle will do with it. It's probably been two years since I was first on their rangelands and I just remember being immediately impressed with the quality of the range, the, their approach to management, um, the ease in which their cattle move through the system. And certainly they're not the only ones that have achieved that, but it, they're a, a great example of low stress, basic understanding of good range management, uh, profitable range management. The other thing about the operation as I got to know the family a little bit is that the, the kind of the dualistic role of their, their farm and ranch with their crop side and the progressive nature of their cropping with the no-till, the covers, the forage crops, Livestock integration, you know, Mark mentioned that it's what they've always done, but truly um, it's, it's leadership in the landscape. And the way that they've meshed those two things and now coming down to, the, to passing it on to the fifth generation is really going to be an interesting story to, to continue to see unfold. My family, dad, uncle, grandpa, and so forth, have given us one of the greatest opportunities. I mean, they've set this farm up for us to continue to succeed. They've been looking at future generations. The generations that have gone before me really put a focus on conservation and health of our soils and our range management and our grasslands. And so just stepping from that, I'd like to just keep, keep that vision of how can we make this better for the next generation. And there's always different ways that we can be improving, whether our soils or our cattle, whatever it is, there's always different aspects that we can 
continue learning and so it's been really great to have things like South Dakota Grazing School and stuff like that where you can learn more innovation and different ways that other people have gone before us and have either made the mistakes or uh, learned the different ways that we can always be improving. In today's economy it's it's really hard right now to keep going so having all this knowledge and how to better your farm is really going to help succeed in the future.